in South Lane Buzzard, we went back into the countryside and were staying amongst quite a few small villages around the canal. The first was the very oddly named Slapton, but it had this delightful sandstone chapel. Then on the other side, near the train robbery bridge, there was Mentmore. And then between all of them was our lifeline in the middle of a bunch of fields, Jennington Station. For a week or so, we were moored opposite this vegan boat restaurant called the Buddha Barge, which I ate at one weekend, and it was bloody delicious. And in the distance from this location, you can see the most prominent local landmark, Ivinghoe Beacon. Here I am, it's an Ivinghoe Beacon, and I'm at the back, just like 300 meters tall. This is the highest point we have passed on the boat. Obviously, the canal does not go until here. But it's not far in that direction. We're truly entering the Chilters here. That's the way we're taking it to the east over there. And just below the beacon, surrounded by the flat wheat fields, is the almost 400-year-old Pittston windmill. On Fridays it's open where you can see all the mechanisms that the cells activate and how the whole entire thing is all connected to and resting on a 500-year-old tree trunk. And then there's another tree trunk at a right angle to it which holds the sails in place. Head to the other side of the village and it's another type of mill, this time a water mill in operation. Feeding it is this mill pond fed itself by a stream off of nearby Ivinghoe Beacon. Autocoster Sluis pushes the wheel round, which then in tandem pushes round the main cog inside and then all the other connected cogs who eventually have the grinding stones whizzing round at 90 revs a minute. There are also cogs connected to a pulley system through trap doors to send bags of grain up to the top floor to then be thrown in the bins at the back here down to the middle floor. But of course, before that, as with everything in life, you've got to cut the wheat from the chaff, which was done with this contraption. Quite odd. This place doubled as a sheep wash where they would use a stick to hold a sheep down in the stream and after it would get a wash it would then crawl out up this slope and back into the field. In 
the south of the village, you will find Pitstone's small sandstone chapel. and one of many former chalk mines now turned meadows. Encapsulating all of these local farming industries and more was the museum at Pittstone Green. functioning blacksmith workshop. While I was there, he was making this beautiful hook, which I bought. A noted obstacle for boaters round here, but also, nonetheless, a very useful fork in a piston, is this swing bridge. Always pretty tough to budge, but always manageable. And then on to Mars were.